to our service for Advent Sunday, the 29th of November at Grace Hill Moravian Church. This afternoon, there's a lot going on. At one o'clock, you're invited to go on an Irish district walk by Zoom. You can watch others walking from the comfort of your own home, or you can go out walking and share what you are seeing as you walk with others on Zoom. If you want to join in but haven't got the login details, then just get in touch with me and I'll send them out to you. At two o'clock in the afternoon, our children are joining in Children's Church and at 7.30, our Youth Fellowship are meeting. And both of these meetings are on Zoom too. Bible study is on Monday at 7.30 and Girls' Brigade meet on Tuesday at 6.30. And both of these meetings are by Zoom. Next Sunday's service will also be online and I will be leading that service. Our call to worship. We gather here at the end of one week and at the beginning of another. O Lord of decades and days, of centuries and seconds. We stop now for this time and turn together to you who holds all time in your hand. Make us ready to receive you as we gather here today. Amen. On the first Sunday in Advent, we start lighting our Advent candles. And this year, they look a little different to our usual candles. They are themed and coloured the same as the wreaths used in the Moravian Church in Costa Rica. And for the first Sunday in Advent, the first candle is purple and it represents families. And it's going to be lit for us by Erin Montgomery. Let us pray. Lord God and Father of us all, we thank you for our families. Thank you that your son Jesus was raised in an ordinary family, so he understands the love and joy and the pressures in families. Lord, we know that this is a difficult time for families with restrictions, fear of job losses and separations. So Lord, be with our families and give them peace, love, and a sense of your presence through this Advent season. Amen. And now we sing along to the Hosanna Anthem that has been recorded by Moravians across the world. Blessed 
Advent Sunday is just one of those special days in the church's year when it seems like we're just gearing up for Christmas. So much happens in such a short time in Advent and it's just 27 days till Christmas Day. Now I know that much about Christmas will be different this year. There's going to be no big school plays no concerts with parents packed into school halls or churches, no big family parties, and no trips round to all the relatives. And the thing that I'm going to miss most is no trips to the Christmas market in Belfast. That's the highlight of my Christmas preparations, and I just love it. But at the end of the day, what we're celebrating at Christmas is the birth of Jesus. God's only son who came to earth to show us how much God loves us and to bring us home to God. And we have lots of lovely traditions in this church and of course in other churches that help us get ready to celebrate that. The first of course is the Advent candles and this year we're using the colours that are used in Costa Rica in the Moravian churches there and each week we will light a candle and on Christmas Day, we will light the big white candle right in the middle, symbolising the birth of Jesus. Now, this isn't a Moravian tradition, but it is a tradition that's very popular in lots of Moravian churches. And the second great tradition is the Hosanna Anthem that we will hear. This anthem was written in 1765 by Christian Gregor who was a great Moravian musician. And six, 1765 is the same year that this church was opened. And this anthem is sung by Moravians all over the world on Advent Sunday and Palm Sunday. And the third great tradition that we celebrate in this church is that of the Advent star going up. The star is traditionally put up on Advent Sunday and lit and this tradition dates from a Moravian boarding school in Germany in the middle of the 19th century. And again, this is a tradition that has spread in Moravian churches all over the world. And this is our Moravian star. Isn't it beautiful? The Advent star reminds us of the star that guided the wise men to find Jesus. They saw a star at its rising, and in faith and trust, and with all the knowledge of their charts, they followed it westward until they came to Jerusalem, the capital city, which is just the place you would look for a child who was born to be king of the Jews. But they soon realised their mistake and set off following the star again, until they came to Bethlehem, where the star appeared to stop. And yes, they found a baby, but not a baby born in a palace, but a baby in a humble home. And not a baby from a princely family, but a baby in a carpenter's family. The star had pointed the way. And so we set up our stars on Advent Sunday. And we keep them up and lit in the church until the 6th of January which is the day that we traditionally celebrate the wise men arriving at that simple home in Bethlehem and finding the baby and falling down and worshipping the baby Jesus. So our Advent star is a symbol of hope because it points to Jesus, who is the hope of all Christians. 
We hope in and trust in God because of what he has done for us through Jesus. And the star reminds us to trust in Jesus, God's son. And because it is a symbol of hope and trust, many Moravian churches, including our own here in Grace Hill, put up their Advent stars in March at the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak. It was a way of trying to symbolise hope to a world that was so worried about something that we had so little control over. So our Advent star has been up and lit in church since March and it will stay up and lit until the coronavirus is showing signs of going away. It's the star that points to Jesus and it calls us all to trust in Jesus, even when things seem so very dark and worrying. So, shine on star, lead us to Christmas, and lead us to Jesus. Reading from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labour pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. 
But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Yesterday, Chris and I spent around 15 minutes watching our bird table. There was a young thrush on the ground picking up the droppings and starlings coming in and out. But the main fun was in watching our robin. We think he lives in the arches and every morning he sings away, almost stamping his feet until we put food out. Well, yesterday morning, we watched him try and chase away two cold hits who were trying to get to the food on the table. To and fro the action went, and he, as he chased away one cold hit, so the other was free to land on the bird table. At one point, the robin almost crashed into one of the doors in his urgency to scare, to scare off the cold hits. All that energy being extend, expended just to try and keep his territory, when there was enough food for all. And there is, of course, a parable in that, and I'm sure that that will come out in the days to come. But for us, it was 15 minutes doing absolutely nothing except watching God's good creation. So, was it time wasted? No, I think it was time well spent. Time is a funny old thing. In previous years, we've all had the experience of waiting either at city or international airport, waiting for loved ones to fly in. And even a small delay seems like an age. Time is passing and we wish it would hurry up. We don't realize that in that moment, we're wishing our lives away, that our lives would speed by. And then the beloved one or the family arrives from the arrivals hall, weighed down with bags and rushing towards you and all the hugging and greeting. And then comes the realization that we want time to slow down. So this moment can last forever and the visit will last as long as possible. And Paul is writing to a community that is waiting. A community that is waiting for Jesus to return. In fact, it's not just the Thessalonians who are waiting. Paul is waiting. The early Christian world was waiting for Jesus to return and to put things right, to exalt the lowly and put down the mighty, to lift up those who believed in Jesus, to be with him in glory. Paul has already addressed the issue of those who have died in the faith. And he's explained to them that he has no timetable of when God will act in bringing about the day of the Lord. And in this, he is echoing the words of Jesus, who also tells his disciples that it is not for them to know the times or periods that the Father sets by his own authority. God's timetable is not ours to know. We might speculate, but that is what it is at best, guesswork on our behalf. We must wait, wait for Jesus to return. And at different times, we might want this so badly because things feel so difficult. And at other times, when it feels like there's much to praise about, we hold on to the goodness of creation and of God's plan for us. But does this mean that we can just do as we like because we're waiting? Of course not. Just because we don't know the timings doesn't mean that we shouldn't be ready all the time. And Paul uses an image that is familiar to us. 
that of a thief in the night. Of course, if you were expecting a burglary, you would put the ladder out of the way. You would hide the car keys in a better place and you would put on the alarm system. But these things, as with so many other things in life, are unexpected and all too often they catch us unawares. But we are not to be unprepared in our faith because none of us knows what is around the corner for us or for our families or our friends. So following the analogy of the thief in the night, we are to stay awake and to be children of the day and of light, not of the night. So what does this mean for us as followers of Jesus some 2,000 years later on? And here we are, still waiting for Jesus to return. Well, it's obvious, really. We are to be ready, just as those bridesmaids were in Jesus' parable that we looked at last week. We are to keep our faith up, to keep our stocks of oil high. And of course, now is just the right time to check the oil levels in the tankers before we forget all about it in the middle of Christmas celebrations. We are to live prepared all the time and to live as people who want to share the light and love of Jesus in our lives. We're not to be worried about the passing of time. What instead we are to be concerned about is the quality of time that we are given. We are to spend our time well, not in a stupor and not in an endless rush, but to spend it in a way that honours the God who has given us this time and the breath to live in this time. So as we wait for Christmas, as we wait for a vaccination, as we wait to see loved ones, as we wait for good news, as we wait for an ending of curfews and restrictions, as we wait for the lengthening days and the hope of spring, may we wait in faith, may we live in hope, and as we live, may we share the love and peace of God and the joy that Christmas brings. Thank you. 
Let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. God of all time, you made time and you entered time to be with us. We move from ordinary time to extraordinary time. And in all this, we wait for you. Keep our hearts aflame with the things that please you. Mercy, humility, justice. As we turn to pray to you, we worship you in time, in spirit and in truth. Amen. And a prayer of faith. God, I feel time slipping by and I feel it dragging. Let me feel you with me so that I may find meaning in every moment. Soothe away my fear so I can find blessings in these circumstances and beauty in my longing for company, for agency, for sacraments and singing. Teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. A prayer about love. God, you know who I miss terribly. I lift them to you and ask you to protect and reassure them. I take courage now to ask that you will also bless those whom I don't miss, those I am angry or disillusioned with. Teach me what it means to love those I don't like and find hard to respect. For I trust you died and rose again for them as well as for me. Teach us to count our days that we may find and gain, what, gain a wise heart. A prayer about hope. God, with you the future is always full of possibility. Knowing you are with me stirs my love. You banish resentment. Help me to make the most of the strange opportunities lockdown may be offering. That when it is over, I will not merely hand back to you the talent of this time, but in my thanksgiving, give you back your abundant gifts with interest. Teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. God, some of us are exhausted by restraint, subdued by loneliness, disorientated by diagnosis, dumbfounded by incompetence, hurt by casual prejudice, dismayed by politics, bewildered by bereavement, imprisoned by fear. We do not want you to explain these away. We name them candidly to you. In frustrating time, give us patience to let the richness of your time show through, that we may be humbled by courage, amazed by generosity, touched by affection, moved by empathy, surprised by neighborliness, inspired by ingenuity, healed by gratitude, enlivened by hope.
final prayer and blessing. Go now and live as children of the light. Put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Make the most of all God has given you, and encourage one another in Christ. And may God's hand be open to you in kindness. May Christ Jesus welcome you into his joy. And may the Holy Spirit fill you with courage, vigilance, and faithfulness. Amen.